Could somebody confirm if you're able to see my screen? Yes, we can see it. All oh, good. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today for the webinar. Um, as Jason mentioned, myself and Lara, we are going to go through uh, and talk about uh, Defender for DevOps today and the uh, and the value that it brings to your environments. Uh, we both are program managers and work in Defender for DevOps uh, team. So. Let's go to the agenda quickly. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about the customer challenges that we have heard from uh, customers uh, and, uh, and and what is the value proposition of Defender for DevOps. And uh, we will then move on to talking about Defender for DevOps architecture and Q&A. Uh, like Jason mentioned, please feel free to post uh, the questions in the chat window. My wonderful team is here to help uh, us answer the questions while we speak. Yeah, so let's kick it off. So customer challenges. Um, we all know how DevOps brings benefits as well as challenges. So I put the slides to kind of paint a picture around what challenges we are solving with Defender for DevOps. Um, we've observed and we have heard from the customers. There are communication issues between security and development teams. Uh, and I'm sure you realize it when I say developers aim mainly aim to push the software out of the delivery pipeline as fast as possible. But when you think of the security teams, uh, uh, we are always thinking of uh, uh, you know delivering secure applications, uh, and that's our top priority. Which in turn means we are actually spending relatively large amount of times reviewing the application before each release, uh, and this is due to the lack of lack of collaboration and this is due to the fragmented visibility that uh, you know security teams have and another issue that we have also observed and heard from the customers is uh, they have various different tools that they have deployed within the pipelines and they have multiple devops platform usage so they just kind of don't know which applications are secure and which is not. Uh, this has been an issue for some time. So to wrap it all up, what we are trying to cover with this product is um, the lack of insights that we have got feedback from, uh, the business risk insights and the automation and prioritization insights uh, to it. And that's another piece that we have heard that causes friction as well. And these are the three big things that we are going after with Defender for DevOps. Now, um, to stay on top of the constantly changing game, um, you know, Defender for DevOps is all about how we claim uh, code to cloud security um, under Defender for Cloud. So we all know how increasingly sophisticated attacks are these days, and we really need to secure the entire life cycle. Um, so which is why Defender for DevOps is there, and uh, this is an offering that is a part of Defender for Cloud family. Uh, the offering is in public preview right now, which means uh, uh, you know it's free for you to use and test it out in your environment and see how things work. And also, this is an opportunity for you to shake the product, provide us feedback, and help us uh, you know plan for the roadmap. Um, you know, feel free to give it a try. But eventually, when we release this product in GA uh, later this year, it's going to have its own SKU. Uh, it's it's going to have its own pricing and and things like those. So, which uh, which needs to be, uh, which we will be uh, talking about in the upcoming months. Uh, um, yeah. So, this is the three value pillars of Defender for DevOps. Uh, so the idea behind this is we want to empower security teams with unified DevOps security management across multi pipeline as well as multi cloud environments. And these are the top three challenges that we always hear from the customers. And this is what we are trying to tackle with this product. Number one being unified visibility into the DevOps security posture. So when we were discussing the challenges in the earlier slide, we learned how DevOps team, dev teams, and security teams operates in silos, right? And we've also heard feedbacks from the customers how, uh, you know, security admins specifically do not have full visibility into their DevOps inventory. They don't know how developers are working on the code. They don't know how they're 
pushing the code in their uh, in their deployment uh, in their development uh, um, you know and and also they don't know if they have vulnerabilities and things like those they don't have complete visibility that's exactly what we are taking care of with this and along with that we are also providing security posture of pre-production application code with the help of the first pillar so that you know you can view the resource configurations across multi pipeline and multi cloud environments all in one single view with that, let's dig deep into the first pillar. So when you have onboarded your connectors, uh, I'll show this to you in the demo how you onboard the connectors. It's very simple, uh, just four step process, um, you know, um, with, with no overload. And once you have onboarded your connectors, you know, you will be able to see this kind of a screen under the DevOps security blade. But let's take a step back and uh, talk more about what we are showing in the unified visibility. So after you onboard your connectors, you will be able to see there is a full DevOps inventory here. Um, you know, as a security admin, you're able to see how many repositories you have um, and how the health of the repositories are. And it's like you see, it's a multi pipeline. You, you know, you can have your GitHub or Azure DevOps, uh, though we have these two integrations today. There are more integrations that's coming up. Um, my, uh, many of the customers are requesting for some third party integrations as well, like GitLab and Bitbucket things like those. So we are working on that as well. That's in the roadmap. If if there is anything uh, specific that you are looking for, let us know in the chat window. Um, we'll be happy to discuss with you further on that area. So once you have onboarded the connector, uh, we extend this capability with continuous assessment, uh, just like how Defender for Cloud assesses all your resources that you have onboarded into your subscriptions and provide you the health of the environments. Um, you know, we are able to provide the health of your repositories um, here with, and, and show that in the Defender for Cloud dashboard. Uh, you know, you will also have uh, uh, security admins getting more visibility into the state of the compliance of the DevOps itself and then gather all those insights into a single console like this. Um, and also, you know, Defender for DevOps will also assess your environments and provides you hardening recommendations, which you can view it under the recommendations uh, pane here that I'll show it to you in a in a bit. Like, for example, you may have secrets left in the code. Uh, you may have dependency scanning for infrastructure as a code scanning and things like those. And those are the things that we would provide you more information on under the recommendations pane. So with the help of which, you know, we are trying to create the continuum between the developers and the SecOps teams. That has been a challenge so far. And talking about security insights, uh, like you see, it's a single console that you can use to manage your DevOps security. Also, we have uh, custom workbooks uh, uh, that is available. Uh, so within the Defender for Cloud dashboard, when you click on the workbooks, you'll be able to see a specific dedicated workbook that we have, which is DevOps security workbook, which I'll show it to you in a bit. Um, but what that workbook does is it kind of provides you a flexible and customizable uh, canvas for data analysis so that you know you can create uh, rich and visual uh, you know visual reports in case if you want to show reports to your CISO uh, you know uh, to provide an overview of how your environment is doing and things like those that's 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 capable of doing that and it's a KQL that's working in the back end which means it's customizable for you. You know, you you can edit the queries and you can use the help of the KQL to visualize the state of your uh, DevOps posture for the connectors that you've configured. So having said that, let's uh, uh, dig deep into the demo. Um, I'm going to show you um, how a uh, couple of screens, uh, pre-built screens, because uh, I want to give you end-to-end -end experience of how you would, how it would look like when you actually onboard the connectors. And in my subscription, I've already onboarded the subscriptions uh, and the connectors. That's why this uh, these screens are. So. For the first time, and by the way, this is the Defender for Cloud portal, right? And like you notice here, there is a 
DevOps Security Blade uh, dedicated for DevOps. When you click on the DevOps Security Blade, you'll be able to see this uh, uh, kind of a screen if you're logging into this for the first time where you're asked to uh, add a connector. When you click on add a connector, you'll be pushed to the environment settings, asking you the capability, you know, providing you the capability to either add the GitHub or DevOps inventory, depending on what you're trying to onboard. In this example, I'm onboarding one of my DevOps connector. Uh, so as I said, it's a four step process, a very simple process to onboard. Here you would be providing your connector information um, and you'll be providing a placeholder as a subscription uh, for and uh, and resource group as a placeholder and then you'll be selecting the region. Um, I just want to highlight uh, while we are in this screen uh, that uh, while the product is in public preview, uh, the only regions that we are supporting is Central US, um, which means all the results and the data is stored in the Central US location. But if you have GDPR compliance that your data shouldn't be going from one region to another or any specific region to any of the US regions, no worries. We are working on expanding this regional availability, um, which you will be able to see it soon in the product as we release it in the GA. But the, currently, as it's in public preview, we support only Central US today. So in the next step, I'll be selecting the plans where I'll be choosing um, to uh, you know, protect my DevOps environment and source code with advanced features. The third step is where all the magic is happening, where you're authorizing the connection. So when you click on authorize the connection, you'll be receiving a pop up like this, which is uh, uh, telling me that this is the extension that our application that gets installed into the DevOps uh, Azure DevOps uh, dashboard. So Microsoft Security DevOps is actually a command line application that integrates uh, static analysis tools into the development lifecycle. So uh, it installs, it configures and runs the latest version of static analysis tools, um, uh, you know, like SDL security um, and compliance tools, but not limited to just this. But again, it's a data driven with portable configurations that will enable you to determine execution across multiple pipelines. And we are using several open source tools that I'll show it to you in a bit. Um, but for Azure DevOps, we are using credential scan scanner tool for uh, scanning the credentials. Um, but uh, yeah, so if you scroll down further, you'll be able to see what permissions you're giving. Mostly it's read permissions to your repositories. And the moment you click on accept, this extension gets installed in the resource group that you selected in the first screen, as well as in the Azure DevOps dashboard. And you'll notice that you'll be presented to choose the organizations that you would want to monitor. Um, either choose pick and choose from the drop down or select all depending on your choice and either you do auto discovery of the projects, which means it will be applicable for the current project as well as the future projects or select the projects in the drop down. And then these are the permissions that you just agreed to give uh, to Defender for Cloud. Like you notice, it's read permissions uh, for most of it, except for the work items where we are actually uh, reading and writing for the pull request annotations specifically, which Lara is going to talk about in a bit. Um, here you will go ahead and review and create. And once you do that, you'll see that in the environment settings, you will see the connector uh, being installed. And when you now click on DevOps Security Blade, you'll see this kind of a view um, where you know it gives you more information about your coverage, like how many connectors you have with how many repositories. And in the dashboard itself gives you good overview of the vulnerabilities that you have so that at a at a stretch, you know, as soon as you look at this dashboard, you're able to see and tell how healthy the environment is. Um, along with this, you know, we give you some recommendations as well. Uh, to be specific, we uh, surface six recommendations today uh, for Defender for DevOps. Um, so four of them are here. So it 
the code repositories will be scanned if you have uh, code scanning, secret scanning or dependent bot scanning or any infrastructure as a code scanning. Uh, these are the four recommendations that you will have. Um, let's imagine you're using a GitHub repository. You've onboard, you're onboarded a GitHub connector and you don't have code scanning, secret scanning or dependent bot scanning enabled in your repositories. Then those three recommendations will be surfaced as well, asking you to first of all enable them and when, when you enable them, we will be able to scan the repositories. Only then we'll be able to scan the repositories. So those are the additional three recommendations along with these four. So seven in total today, but we are working on uh, having more recommendations so that we show you more vulnerabilities if you have any. So that was my first pillar. Now talking about the second pillar, it's all about strengthening the cloud resource configurations. So if you think about it, security admins are so overwhelmed today with security issues in the runtime. So what we are going to do is try to shift left in terms of cloud resource configuration itself. Uh, we are enabling and managing security across uh, security scanning across uh, source code, dependencies, containers, infrastructure as a code and embedded secrets with an all integrated tool. So that you know we provide uh, uh, strengthening of the cloud resource configuration throughout the development life cycle uh, that will help you, you know, to check uh, for the secure uh, security checks at the design time itself. And that way you can also minimize the cloud misconfigurations reaching the production environments. So we have infrastructure as a code security that we cover and we have container scanning that we do. Uh, and along with that, uh, we use, uh, uh, you know, we have support for ARM, BICEP, um, Terraform and CloudFormation templates. And we are also leveraging cloud security benchmark to display the recommendations. This is just an example of how it how the recommendation uh, provides you uh, the secret security checks. Um, but technically what we are doing with the help of this pillar is uh, uh, empowering developers to, you know, with clear remediation guidance with this pillar to fix those issues that you are identifying in the code so that, you know, security admins are able to delegate ownership to the developers uh, and the developers know where exactly they have to go to and how to fix it and things like those. So essentially uh, you're putting the time back in the hands of security teams with the help of this pillar. Yeah. Let's uh, uh, dig deep into the demo. Um, let me go to my Defender for Cloud Portal. Like you notice, I have one connector each, connector for GitHub at DevOps, and these are my repositories. And this is these are the issues that I am uh, seeing here uh, for my repositories. But when I click on the recommendations played, you'll notice that uh, uh, you know we have several security controls and we surface the recommendations under remediate vulnerabilities. Uh, which has a maximum score of seven. And since the product is in public preview, the recommendations that we provide here are not counted towards your secure score. Uh, let's take an example of code repositories that have secret scanning findings enabled. So um, let's imagine, you know, uh, uh, you know, let's think about it for a second for the specific recommendation. So when passwords and other secrets are stored in the source code, uh, you know how it poses a significant risk and could compromise the security of your environments, right? So Defender for Cloud offers the solution by using, you know, secret scanning to detect the credentials, secrets and certificates and other sensitive content that you have that you may have in your source code and, you know, you build uh, and your build output. So secret scanning can be run as a part of uh, uh, Microsoft security DevOps for Azure DevOps extension. But if you are use, uh, you know, if you are monitoring GitHub connector, uh, you know, we are leveraging the uh, the secret scanner that GitHub advanced security uses in the backend for the GitHub. Uh, so Specifically, this is telling me that there are secrets found in the code repository and we provide you with the remediation steps and affected resources. 
And these are the security checks that we have been able to find. Now, as a security admin, this is a very good view for me uh, to understand how my developers are working on uh, in their code specifically. Now, I could click on any of these security check and uh, you will be able to see more information like description, general information, um, and additional information on the affected resources. As a security admin, if I'm not aware how to visit my repo, I have these hyperlinks that I could click on, which will take me to the GitHub repository or the ADO repository that is subject to uh, you know, vulnerabilities. Now, um, let's go back here, and what it's reporting me is there is a, a secret uh, that's exposed in one of my Active Directory, Azure Active Directory application. So let's click on the security tab here and go to the secret scanning. You'll be able to notice the same recommendation that's been surfaced that Defender for Cloud has been able to surface in the portal. Now, when I click on this secret scanning, it tells me that this is a possibly active secret and the secret, uh, it points me to the line of code, giving me more information of, you know, um, where which line of code I need to go to to resolve this and things like those. Uh, and we also provide you the remediation steps asking you to rotate the secret, you know, so that you are preventing the work, uh, breaking of the workflows and things like those. So that was about uh, secret scanning and let's imagine my developer fixed this then at uh, 60 minutes of freshness interval we will scan this again and we are able to uh, post this as a healthy resource further. I want to show you one other recommendation before I pass on to Lara. Uh, code repositories should have infrastructure as a code scanning finding. So this is another recommendation we surface out of all the four where we are telling you that there are uh, some uh, you know, issues with the repositories, with the infrastructure as a core, and we provide you remediation steps uh, similarly. Um, so here, when I click on any of the security check, we give additional information like what kind of a tool we used in order to surface this recommendation and what is the rule ID and things like those, along with the affected resources, of course. Right, so you can notice that, uh, like for example, here I'm using template analyzer, and this is the rule ID, and and this is the affected resource. Right, so um, I could go to the uh, specific repo, and then you know look at the actions or my pull request to actually uh, see the same uh, errors that's been surfaced, uh, you know, in the Defender for Cloud dashboard. All right. So this was about uh, my second pillar where we are helping customers to strengthen the cloud resource configurations in the code. Uh, and we are identifying the issues before it even reaches to the production so that you know you can uh, surface this uh, information to the developers and and kind of you know set accountability to the developers. Um, so one last thing before I give it away to Lara, these are the open source tools that we are using today uh, to surface these recommendations. Uh, we are using a bunch of linting tools, Python linters, JavaScript linter, binary scanner, um, in order to find out the common weaknesses in the Python and JavaScript code, we are using Bandit ESLint. Um, in order to find out misconfigurations in the common infrastructure as a code templates, we are using Terraform ARM template analyzer, and we are using Truvi to for the container scanning for the Docker files. And like I said, for the secret scanning in ADO, we are using CRED scan. Uh, but if you think about GitHub, that you know we are using uh, the same secret scanner that GitHub Advanced Security uses. So let's imagine you have other tools and have GitHub Advanced Security turned on. You will still receive the recommendations. OK, um, you know, like for example, the customers may have a uh, code QL, um, uh, you know, that they use for scanning. They can still use that with our add ons. It's just a bonus that you get. OK. With that, I'm going to pass it off to Lara to talk about uh, our most important third pillar. 
Over Thanks, to you, sir. Lara. All right. So the third pillar that we have is automate with integrated security intelligence. This allows security teams to simplify remediation processes for triaging code vulnerabilities. Security teams have historically been responsible for responding to and remediating vulnerabilities within CICD pipelines without having knowledge of all the code and cloud connections. But now using Microsoft Defender for DevOps, security can focus on the most critical issues with the rich contextualization of a new cloud security graph in Microsoft Defender for Cloud. I'll talk about that more next, but essentially this includes application code insights and it allows security teams to quickly identify software vulnerabilities in source code alongside their runtime resources for easy prioritization. After identifying these critical vulnerabilities, security teams can leverage custom workflows through Azure Logic Apps to assign developer ownership. They can feed into the tools that developers are most familiar with, like Jira or ServiceNow. They can send a Teams message, a Slack message, send an email through Logic Apps, or alternatively, you can configure pull request annotations so that you can easily communicate the findings directly to the developer in their workflow within Azure DevOps and GitHub. Security teams don't have to leave Defender for Cloud to do this, and it speeds up the time to remediate and limits the overall application exposure. She gives some more details about the cloud security graph. This is part of a new Defender for Cloud plan called Defender Cloud Security Posture Management. The Cloud Security Graph is a graph-based context engine that collects data from multi-cloud and hybrid environments and basically inventories all your different cloud resources, looks at different connections and lateral movement possibilities between resources, identifies insights like exposure to the internet, excessive permissions, network connections, vulnerabilities, and more. All this data is combined and builds a graph that represents your cloud environment. Defender for Cloud uses this graph to perform an attack path analysis to help you identify issues with the highest risk that exists within your environment. You can also query the graph using the Cloud Security Explorer and the Defender for DevOps information is all part of the security graph, so you can easily query for vulnerabilities or for any sort of misconfigurations, which I'm going to show in the demo now. So within Defender for Cloud, we're able to open up this Cloud Security Explorer and you can query for different types of information about your GitHub repositories. So I'm going to search for GitHub repositories within here, and then I can add this drill down to say, maybe I wanna see all my GitHub repositories that allow for public access, and maybe they also have exposed credentials because I don't want any of my public repositories to have hard-coded secrets within them and attackers would be able to use those to gain access to other workloads within my cloud for environment. Maybe if there's an exposed Azure storage account key, an attacker would be able to find that and then get access to sensitive information. So that's something that I want to be aware of as a security professional. So what I would do here is I would add in the insight saying that my GitHub repository allows public access as soon as this loads up. And then I will also add in another option saying, I also wanna see where my GitHub repository has a recommendation that lets me know that secret scanning findings should be resolved. So we have this recommendation that Safina already showed saying code repository should have secret scanning findings resolved. And we wanna see where the status is unhealthy, meaning that this repository currently has exposed credentials. When I build up this query, I'm going to press search and then I'm able to get my results returned back to me. So I can see that I have one GitHub repository 
that allows for public access and also has a secret that has been discovered. I can open up the recommendation page to learn a bit more. Maybe I want to see what type of secret it is. Here I can see that it is an Azure storage account key. This is pretty high risk in my opinion, so I would want to take action as a security professional to make sure that this gets resolved. The way I can do that through the portal or one of the ways is by triggering a logic app. An Azure logic app can take any sort of action that you want it to. Like I mentioned earlier, you can send an email, you can send a message in Teams, you can open a ticket in ServiceNow or in JIRA, you can create a work item within Azure DevOps or create an issue within GitHub to let the developer know that they need to remediate that. So this logic app can be automatically kicked off as well. Um, and before I talk about some other options like configuring pull request annotations, I just want to come back to this cloud security graph to talk through other scenarios. So right now we looked for any sort of GitHub repositories that allow for public access and contain secrets, but there are other use cases that I would want to maybe use this for. And one of those is if we think of the log4j vulnerability, when that happened, a lot of security teams, they didn't know where log4j existed within their environment. They didn't know where they had the exposure. They couldn't easily find all of their source code that did contain that vulnerability. And that's one of the problems that this Cloud Security Explorer is trying to solve because you can query for different sorts of vulnerabilities here. So you can query for specific vulnerabilities based on their CVE ID. You can query for the severity of vulnerabilities, any sort of description. So maybe the description contains log4j, you would be able to query based on that. Or the CVSS score vector. Here I'll just query for severity because I just want to see all of my repositories that do have high severity vulnerabilities so I can work with my developers to remediate those vulnerabilities. And this will return back my different um, repositories that are vulnerable. And from there, you can view different sorts of information about each vulnerability, and you can go to the repository URL so you can further triage this. And you can get the full information here, open up the vulnerability page, go to the repository URL, and that didn't want to work, but, um, and basically just get the information you need. The other option we have for communicating with the developers, I already showed the logic app option, but we also have something called pull request annotations, and that's what I want to discuss now, because pull request annotations let security teams automate the communication with developers so you can configure pull request annotations directly through the Defender for Cloud portal on your Azure DevOps repositories. You would go to the DevOps security blade, select the Azure DevOps repository, and then press configure. When this loads up, you are able to turn on pull request annotations, and that will let the developer know on their pull request that a finding was discovered by Defender for DevOps, and it's going to provide remediation guidance for the developer. We all know that developers, they move super quickly. They want to develop new features as quickly as possible to meet customer demands, and security has often struggled with that because security doesn't want to have any sort of new releases unless they can verify that everything is 100% secure. And security will also sometimes just send like a long word document of all of these vulnerabilities that developers need to triage and fix. And it can be really tiresome for the developers who are used to automating everything. So by configuring pull request annotations, security is able to help with that automation process because they are giving developers the feedback as developers are developing applications. So here we can configure pull request annotations for secret scanning currently. And for any secrets that have a high severity level, a 
uh, comment will automatically be added onto the developer's pull request. So if I'm a developer working within Azure DevOps and I just submitted a pull request, Defender for DevOps ran its scan and found an AWS uh, S3 client secret access key, I would get that feedback directly on that pull request as a comment by Microsoft Defender for DevOps. I'm able to see the severity level, the information, and even different sorts of remediation guidance, letting me know that a potential secret was detected as a developer. What I need to do is I need to validate that it is actually a secret. Then I would remove and rotate that credential and use an approved key store like AWS Key Management Service or Azure Key Vault instead. I can also go learn more about CredScan through this aka.ms link that appeared. So it's a very helpful way for developers to know as soon as they submit this request that they do have a secret scanning finding and they need to remediate it. They need to go back and they need to fix that issue. And the developer can make different sorts of, um, takes different sorts of actions based on this. So they can say that they resolved it, they won't fix it, or it's closed out. And it's a really easy way for them just to communicate back to security and for them to understand what they need to do to secure their code. And uh, on that note, we do want to learn more from you about pull requests. So we think that this feature is amazing, but of course we're biased. So we would love for you to fill out this pull request annotation survey so we can understand what you think of this feature, if there's anything else that you think needs to be part of this feature, and we'll post the link within the chat. I'll post it in right now, but we would love if you just could take the time to actually fill this out and let us know what we could do, be doing better in this space. And then the last slide I have here before we wrap up is just around the architecture and overall goals of Defender for DevOps. Defender for DevOps offers a single pane of glass to monitor DevOps security posture and scanning results from code dependencies, container images, um, as well as exposed secrets. It's also providing infrastructure as code security for remediating misconfigurations at the source prior to runtime deployment. By sending all of this information into Defender for Cloud, security can benefit from true code to cloud contextualization and the ability to create integrated workflows to assign developer ownership, configure pull request annotations, and help developers remediate right away. The addition of Defender for DevOps to the Defender for Cloud family makes Defender for Cloud a full cloud native application protection platform that combines DevOps security management, cloud security posture management, and cloud workload protection. Thank you all. And now we have plenty of time for Q&A, and I can see a ton of questions within the chat. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Um... The team's been great with answering all the questions. Um, we do have quite a few. Uh, the first one would be, uh, how would this product align with GitHub Advanced Security, which seems to be providing similar security views? Great question. So GitHub Advanced Security, that is a very developer-focused solution to do secret scanning, code scanning, and open source vulnerability scanning. And it was built for developers and Microsoft Defender for DevOps enhances that experience by bringing the GitHub Advanced Security findings over into Defender for Cloud for security teams. So rather than security going into GitHub to see all of the different issues, they can just use this single Microsoft Defender for Cloud console to triage the different results. So within these different recommendations in Defender for Cloud, for example, if we're looking at GitHub, we're going to have this remediate vulnerability security control. It's going to tell me that code repositories should have code scanning findings resolved. And if I click on one of these code scanning findings, 
um, we can see that it is going to be coming from GitHub Advanced Security if I open it up within GitHub in just a second. So I'll go to the HTML URL to learn more about that vulnerability. And this is a CodeQL finding from GitHub Advanced Security. It's giving the developer the full information about this finding. So the solutions, they work together. Defender for DevOps is pulling from CodeQL and other GitHub Advanced Security features. And it's also adding additional scanning tools. So using the GitHub action that we've provided through Microsoft Defender for DevOps, we are also including infrastructure as code scanning and container image scanning. Great, thank you. Um, the next question we have is how can we extract these findings to report and send email about these findings? Great question. So there are some different options within the portal. One within just this recommendation here, code repository should have code scanning findings resolved. This information is being stored within Azure Resource Graph. And I just clicked on this open query button and this automatically opens a query for me that will return all of the results from that finding. And you can export this, um, download it as CSV. You can also change around the query. It's all using Custo query language, or you can call the Azure Resource Graph API to write, uh, basically post this query to that API, return the results and automate any sort of process using that API. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is, how easy is it uh, to unconnect Defender for DevOps, does it cause any problems or is it just a toggle switch? Yeah, to disconnect Defender for DevOps, you need to just remove the connector. Um, and then if you installed the extension within Azure DevOps, uh, it's called the Microsoft Security DevOps extension that Safina talked about, you would need to uninstall that extension, make sure your pipelines aren't running those different scanning tools anymore. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, how will, the, how will the tool help security admins to identify owner of an application? So for example, in this um, security alert within GitHub that we saw, it is telling me the path that this finding came from, so the actual file. So if you go to this file, you can see who last modified it and get information about like who actually created the pull request and understand the different branches and repositories that it appeared in. So that's one way to help identify the application owner. I would be interested in exploring that offline to understand any sort of specific needs from the person who asked that question to see how we can design this product to make it most easily fit our customers' needs. Uh, great. Um, the next question is, <clears throat> does it also scan build pipeline or K8 clusters? It does scan during the build pipeline um, for Laura, I think we lost you. Guess we can give it a minute, see if she joined. All right, um, well, uh, sorry about that uh, disconnection there, um, but we did get through a lot of good questions. Um, so I'd like to thank uh, Safina and Lara for being our guests today and for an excellent presentation. And thank you to the rest of the team who helped answer questions. 
At the same time, I would like to remind the listeners that the best way to ensure you don't miss any future webinars or major announcements is to visit our landing page at aka.ms slash security community. And while there, you'll find easy ways to navigate and find the resources and learning content relevant to our security products and their communities. A good start would be browsing our bite-sized product videos, ninja trainings, recordings of past webinars, GitHub communities, and more. We love to hear your feedback on how we can improve these webinars. Please take a minute submitting your webinar feedback at aka.ms slash security webinar feedback. Thank you and see you next time. Goodbye.